rearranging, cleaning, doing this, that, and something else out here. And I haven't given you an update for a few days, so I thought I'd catch up a little bit. So I've drugged, I think, about three or, three or four more plan sheets out. And mainly because I've got some 4130 steel coming today for the fuselage fittings to mount the wings. So they're the fittings that have to be cut out, drilled undersized, then sent out and be heat treated. So anyway, I'm going to get those cut out here in the next couple of days probably. Anyway, I thought I'd give you a quick update. My uh, tabletop, even though now it's all pretty well covered again, is now nice and fresh and clean. So what I did rather than replacing it is we just unscrewed it, flipped it over, we got the other side up. So we've got a nice fresh surface. I through the winter and early spring, I used this just as a work table rather than my airplane building table. So it was scuzzy and dirty. And for the airplane building, I drilled quite a few holes through it. So we've got it all flipped over and screwed down again. And we've got a pretty nice fresh surface to be to be working off of. And I will have uh, 40 thousandths aluminum will be here tomorrow sometime. So that will cut the uh, main bulkhead that the spars hook two out of and that will cut the um, main spars for the wings. So even though I'm not really ready to start on the main spars, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the blanks out and probably bend them up just so that they're formed and done with out of the way. I don't have to worry about the remainder of the sheet getting damaged or you know, cut up and used for something else or something that way. So I went ahead and did that. Now over the weekend, I didn't really feel like doing any real work even though I was puttering around out here. So my big bending break had been giving me a little bit of a bow in the in the last longer ribs I'd formed for the or spars I'd formed for the 701. So they're acceptable but I didn't really like that curve especially on this little midget Mustang for the spars. I want I want the bends to be nice and straight. So I ended up and spent the day reworking the reworking the 8 foot bending break. And you can see the difference in color on the on the main. I loosened it up so it's a little bit looser this way. It had a little bit of a hang. It was hanging on the ends. And um, the bow that was in it, I think I've got that out. I've I've been some test, some shorter test pieces, and it looks pretty good. You know, it can always be better, but um, I think I can get nice bends out of it now. Now, whether over the years why it's moved itself out of position, I beat it around enough that it was in out of position, something like that. I'm not really sure. But anyway, it took some time, ground the top of this, the leaf and the, and it was mainly in this leaf here itself, in this piece that comes up here. It wasn't quite straight. It had a little bit of, a little bit of wave. So we'll see how it handles this, this aluminum. But that was a project for Sunday. Now I've been getting clean, things cleaned up, a little more organized for this next build, hopefully. And I've got most of the things to finish out that first bulkhead. But anyway, I was digging through. This is my home-built DRDT2 for dimpling, and I've got MDF. I'm going to form a couple more, couple more um, bulkheads. The last two bulkheads I'm going to form. Uh, this is my fancy little home-built DRDT2. Built it several years ago, and I've played with it, but I haven't really used it. These plants came out years and years ago when they first came out with the little DRDT2 tools. Uh, got a D-Stake clamp on it is what runs the runs the uh, ram up and down. Guys have since changed these over to air cylinders and stuff like that. I contemplated doing that, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to use it just like it is. Um, it's all set up and ready to use. It was, like I say, one of the original clones that came out. Plans were online at least for a while for it. And, um, you know, it was one of those things I built to, for dimpling eventually. But uh, I think this is pretty much, I think this is built quite a bit heavier than the, than the uh, current DRDT2s are. But, you know, neither here nor there, they all work. But anyway, I've got it cleaned up and ready to go again, so we'll be using it before too long. have to have something to complain about 
but once we get uh, once we start forming metal once we get ready to start ribbon and stuff together it's going to get etched and alodined or um, aluminum prepped it's usually a I think it's a phosphate etch type of thing anyway historically I've always I was brought up in the paint industry using Aluma Prep 33 and uh, Aladine 1201. I think 1200 is the clear, but 1201 is the amber colored Aladine. Uh, made by Hankel Company. Been around for years. It's kind of old technology, but it's still you know what we're using. This is 1201 Aladine right here that I still had. Um, I can. Uh, Got around and was shopping it online. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> shopping it online and um, over the weekend. And I found it, of course. And it's available, no problem at all. So I called our local paint supplier. And I've dealt with them before, off and on over the years. Not a tremendous amount, but a little bit. And um, called, gal answered the phone. Told her I wanted some, wondered if they stocked the Lumen Prep 33 or Aladine 1201. She said, can you hold for just a second, please? Yep. So I held for three or four minutes. Phone's answered again. Another gal picked it up. Says, I'm such and such. Can I help you? Lumen Prep 33, Aladine 1201. Can you hold for just a second, please? Yep. About five minutes later, gentleman answers the phone. Little Prep 33, 1201. Well, the first thing is, is that a PPG product? Well, no, it's not, but, you know, PPG's got a thing. He said, well, the only thing I'm going to have is PPG products. I said, okay, and it is their etch and alodine. And I would speculate it's probably the exact same thing. I'll bet if I were to go down and look, it's in the same containers. It's just labeled with PPG labeling, which is fine. And um, I said, well, how much is it? Well, give me just a minute. Well, do you have a phone number so I can call you back? Gave him a number and everything. I'll call you right back. That's been about three hours ago now. So um, when I walk in, well, I'm going to fire up the computer. I'm going to place the order for it. And it's $200 that for me trying to shop locally, the guys weren't interested in my money as far as I'm concerned. So it's really unfortunate. You know, we complain that nobody, you know, we should be shopping locally. We should be supporting our local businesses. And I agree with that, and I'm more than happy to support them. The problem is they either don't know what they're talking about, can't get it, don't want to get it, won't return calls, you know. So my business obviously is not important enough to them around here to warrant a courtesy call back saying, you know, this is what it is, and, you know, we probably have to order it, I'm guessing, although he said he had it, and it would be, should I would think, be a stocking item for the paint suppliers that are doing aluminum work, or the painters that are doing aluminum work. So, um... You know, if it's not worth their time, it's not worth mine. So, anyway, that's my little rant. And, uh, seems like I always have to have a little rant of some sort or another. So, anyway, that's my rant for the day. But, There's my last two bulkheads. Go to the band saw and cut those out. And come back and sand them. And I've also got these which are tip rib templates for both the fin and the stabilizer. They haven't been cut out yet. And these were both drawn with the um, flanges on them. So I'll use these as a cutting template first. And then I'll uh, go back and shave them down and use them as a forming template. And this is stabilizer rib template, same way. Got our cutout marks for a forming die and fin rib templates. So those are the last four 
templates, I think, that I have to cut out for the main aluminum parts. So, anyway, I'll get that done and I can see what they look like. I think we've got all of our form blocks done. A little bit of tuning in here on the inside corners where I drilled them and then just cut them with the bandsaw. They'll have to be hand fitted. But uh, other than that, why well, we're about done with these form blocks. That's going to pretty much finish up the up the stuff for today. Hopefully you find that a little bit interesting. Comment suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below guys. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.